everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Benchmark Symposium, a video series about Vidori's 2023 State of Promotional Review Benchmarks Report. I'm Annalise, Senior Manager of Marketing and Communications at Vidori, and I'm joined once again by Dr. Joe Decapite, Director of Strategy for UK and Europe. Joe, welcome back to the symposium. Uh, thanks, Annalise. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, absolutely. Our first repeat guest. This is very exciting uh, that we're having enough videos in the series to have a repeat guest. Um, so the first time you joined the symposium, we talked about content subtype data. So for those that haven't seen that video, please go. You can go to the LinkedIn page to get that great content. But we're going to pivot today and talk about the reviewer role data in the report. And this is exciting, I think, for many reasons. But one is that this is typically one of the sets of data in the report that people are most interested in and excited about. And I think that's because to some extent, it's a little bit more personal, right? The way that we present the data in the benchmarks report sort of goes from more macro levels like the industry and market segment, and then we sort of go down to team size and review a role. And so I think um, it just is a little bit more personal to folks and reminds them of more of their day to day. It's kind of, you know, just more of that personal touch. So excited to sort of dig into it today. And I'm curious, just from like your experience within industry, why do you think that folks are so interested in the reviewer role data? Yeah, it's it's an interesting area and something I've got not unique perspective, but I've got a pretty good perspective of this just because I, I've i been one of those few people that started their career in medical and so have been doing a the medical style review. Um, but being the wrong type of doctor, I then had to transition out of medical and went into marketing. Um, one of the things I think that means it is always of interest to people is the medical and the marketing role are so critical to this process. So although we call it MLR, um, medical, uh, marketing, legal, regulatory, really it's marketing and medical I found that really are the standard, the stalwarts of this that are in every company's process. And so they do review from a different perspective. Um, we see from our metrics, and I think people understand the behaviors that there are differences between how those two groups review, and rightly so. They're reviewing for a different purpose. One of the things I've realized, even when I've been reviewing wearing my med affairs hat, I review very differently and have a different eye for detail. It just changes the way that you review something, whether you're reviewing it from the medical side and the marketing side. And so that does impact the types of comments that you put on the um, maybe your propensity to reject material or approve material, which will come into looking at the difference in those numbers. But I think it's so critical and people are interested in it because it is that critical part of the relationship that determines whether materials get through quickly or get through slowly. And when you see the differences between medical review times and marketing review times, maybe that is an indicator that there is a an issue may be happening in that review process. Yeah, absolutely. And I think so often blame is sometimes thrown around too for reasons for long review durations or job durations. And so I think this data is helpful just to open up a little bit of the doors behind like what are some typical review times for these different types of roles and how can organizations sort of map those benchmarks to their own organization's data. So very excited to get your insights on these topics. But before we get there, I just wanted to sort of provide a highlight on the data that is included in the 2023 report. So there are two sets of metrics that we look at when it comes to reviewer role. The first is the review duration. So this is the number of days spent during um, to review a piece of content, provide feedback. In the 2023 report, the medical reviewer role takes about 2.9 days to review. Legal is at four days. Regulatory, 3.5 days. And marketing at 2.7 days. The other set of data we present is this first circulation approval rate. So in the 2023 report, medical is at 60.6%, legal at 60%, regulatory at 63.5%, and marketing at 90.2%. So Joe, got these numbers in front of us. What stands out to you? What is rising to the top in terms of something that's interesting from 2023 data? Yeah, probably the, the thing that always jumps out to me whenever I look at this data, and it was the same thing that I saw last year, was legal are always an, uh, an outlier in this. Now, I am, I'm going to pre 
defend legal here because I've often found, particularly when I've been a medical reviewer, almost I feel like sometimes the closest ally is the legal reviewer because they look at things with that um, level of detail. I would say the thing that jumped out to me there is in every company I've worked in, the legal team members that are part of the MLR process, it really is a peripheral part of their role. It's not something that they are well resourced for. It's usually a lot of material going through a very small um, number of legal um, reviewers. And they're often the furthest, most distant from the material. They've got the least familiarity with it. So I think that's just, it's a natural state of that lack of lack of familiarity. And it is just a small part of their job that means that they're um, that they they take the longest to do the review. I would also say for any companies looking for um, process improvements, they typically are an optional part of the process. Certainly for us in the UK and a lot of the European markets, they're an optional part. I understand why companies have that role in there. But if if it's not re not necessary, we do know it's one of the roles that if it can be removed, it does speed up the process significantly. And that all comes down to having that, um, that risk reward um, debate internally. The second thing I would pull out is actually... I'm reassured that in terms of duration time, medical and marketing are taking the same amount of time to look at the material. Now, that's good. It, it suggests to me that they're putting the same level of rigor into it, which is a great thing. Um, certainly, probably when I wore my medical hat, there was this perception that marketing didn't review with the same level of rigor. Um, I'd probably say that when wearing my marketing hat, at times that probably has been true, but then that's potentially appropriate because it's not necessarily the marketing team who are looking for that pure scientific accuracy. So I actually found this reassuring. They were both putting it through in what I would call a relatively timely manner. Two to three days for, for a review circulation is totally fine. There's, there's also been a marked increase this year compared to last year. So an increase in the time taken. Whether that's noise or not, I don't know. It is quite, you can make an easy case though to say we've had an increase in digital content coming through and there is more digital content being produced. So that can be social media, it can be websites, it can be e-detail aids. All of those are more complex than the traditional print materials that, we, that we're more used to seeing. So if there is a real difference between this year and last year, I probably would say it does reflect that increase in digital materials going through and they just, by their nature, slightly less familiar, slightly more complex, slightly higher risk. And so it's appropriate that they take that little bit longer. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the other sort of layer on top of that is I think that's exactly it. And we've talked a lot about the different factors that go into these review times, content subtype being a big one, right? So you and I talked about this previously and all the factors that sort of drive expectations around how long content takes to review and approve. But across the board in the 2023 report, the metrics are higher. It's taking a little bit longer. And I think the other layer on this, and this is something we learned from the customer survey is economic conditions, resource constraints, smaller teams, like there are just so many external factors that I think are also showing up in this year's data just across the board of that. Teams are being asked to do more with less. And so it's also potentially workload related. They are just having to review and approve more. And so inherently you're going to see perhaps some review times go up because of that fact. So, so many factors, again, no year, no two years are the same. So it's always hard to really create like concrete reasons why year over year something is different. But I think all of these factors are certainly contributing to longer review times across the board, but also to your point, not much longer. So we'll actually put, let's quickly put the 2023 versus the 2022 data on the screen. Let's take a look at the review durations in particular. So what you're seeing here is yes, for medical regulatory and marketing, the review times did go up this year, but not not super significantly, like a day or less. And so I think that's good news and something to celebrate as well as that teams are also finding ways to be efficient with all of the constraints that they're put up against this year and potentially the increase in digital content. Yeah, I, the do more, do more with less, I think, is a contributor. I think people are just putting more things through the system and there may even, hopefully not with our customers, hopefully not with anyone who's listening to this, being reduced team sizes. And so it does 
Um, as a just as an obvious fact of that, it takes longer to get materials through. One thing I would say, though, in the quest to do more with less, I've only ever worked in teams that have access to specialist material review software. One thing that's obviously in our data and obviously in my experience, teams work more quickly and more effectively at creating promotional materials when they have a good mechanism to capture all of the comments, capture all of the decisions that get made on materials. And that start to end um, time to create, uh, to produce either promotional or non-promotional materials. We, ob we see it so clearly with the metrics from customers moving from a paper-based system. You can do more with less um, if you can make that investment in a, uh, in a material review software solution. Uh, I, I, do, I do look back and think, that's not to say you can't improve the, even with the system. There are good practices that I'm going to come on to share and some of the practices to avoid to make sure that even if you're using the software, you're using it as effectively as possible to kind of improve, improve your um, metrics even more and do even more with, unfortunately, what is the case, even less at the moment. Yeah. So let's go there. Let's go to some best practices, because I think one of the things that people start to think of when they see this data is, you know, yes, their review times are four days or less for these reviewer roles, but everyone's always trying to optimize the process. Right. And I think from our perspective, software is a big part of this. One of the reasons our customers are able to achieve these metrics is because they are using purpose built software. But to your point, there's a layer on that best practices do layer on top of software. And so what would be some of your top best practices or things for organizations to consider as they think about bringing down or optimizing reviewer time role or review role yeah, time? One of the things I already touched on was that familiarity with a project and how the more familiar you are with the project, the quicker it is to go through the review system. One of the best things that I see from our customers that do this, do material review really well, is this idea of the concept review workflow. So every material will have a slightly different type of document that should be going into this concept review workload, workflow. For example, if it's a particularly innovative project, you'd want to get a document very early on about an approval document for that material type. You want to put that into the software, get comments on that very early on. And the beauty of using, that, using the software, you can still use it in a meeting and then capture the comments within the software. What it means is that when you have that feedback and you say, well, hang on, we've got a fundamental principle is going wrong with this project. As an example, it could be somebody comes to you with a, we want to do a round table meeting. Okay, ask the person, capture as much detail of that round table meeting that you want and put it in for the concept review process. If it's approved, that doesn't mean it's going ahead. What it means is, the review team are able to look at that and say, conceptually, is that meeting type allowed? Or is there a core principle that you're falling foul of? You actually, it looks like you might end up being, you may be paying somebody to promote to them, which certainly in the UK and probably in every market is a big no-no. So those companies that use the concept review workflow really do get early eyes on every project so that those concepts get reviewed, the comments get captured, and then those comments can be referred back to throughout the life of that, um, uh, that, that project. Now, we're always working with customers. Whenever we look at customers and they don't have this, we consult with them, we look at how they're using their software, and we'll suggest that they begin to use this uh, concept review workflow. And as ever with Vidori, the way that we we believe our role in this market is to help companies achieve their compliance processes as simply as possible. We do that workflow change, that consultation, the implementation, all at no additional cost. That's how we make sure that the software remains as close to the business requirement as possible. Mm -hmm. But the metrics, the metrics are clear. When companies use concept review processes, their materials get through more quickly. Well, also, what a great opportunity for cross-functional learning. Right. Those those concept reviews open up areas for conversation that not only are applicable to that piece that you're you know focusing the concept for, but future content as well. It just 
opens up a little bit of the doorways between roles to have conversations. And I think just continue to improve the quality of content that's coming into the process, which is a, a thing that I know a lot of organizations are focused on. So a lot of benefits to sort of establishing that preliminary workflow within the review process. Yeah. And again, when whenever I look at this data and I see big differences between medical review times and marketing review times, and it leads to finger pointing, one of the things that usually is an indication of is that there's not a shared um, a shared vision of what the strategy for that brand is. So that lends itself to silo working. People are not aware of each other's projects. And so things appear on the software to be reviewed. The medic may have never seen this project before. They see a number of errors in it. And they're also, we're all humans. They don't feel good about having not been consulted. So when this is working well, it's usually because there is good strategic alignment between medical and marketing. They've had good collaboration on their materials to make sure that marketing have consulted medical and medical consult marketing. And there is that shared vision of what that piece of material is going to be. So collaborative working, um, yeah, it's, it's a must to get things going through quickly. Yep. It's also something that's unfortunately missed um, way more than it should yep. be. Helping humans do their best work, right? I think is yeah. is you know at the at the core there. Um, so that's really interesting and helpful. I think for for folks to consider what else, what other best practices would you sort of bring to the table for improvement efficiency yeah. as it relates to reviewer role. So having just um, banged the drum for collaborative working and how we should all be friends and work together, I'm now <laughs> going to point two fingers and point one finger at medical about things okay. that they should do better. And I'm mm -hmm. going to point one finger at marketing at something that they should do better. All right, let's hear it. Every medic that I've ever worked with, and when I look back at myself, when I started working in uh, medical departments, over-commenting is a big problem. And it is something so many medical reviewers are guilty of. I've been guilty of it 100%. Like, without doubt, I would say, yes, that's something I did. I'd like to say I did it earlier in my career, but I always try to coach anyone that I've worked with and especially as they become reviewers for the first time, really limit the comments to the critically important ones. If you're going to put something, make sure you write the really important ones and don't dilute it with the less important comments. So that's the finger that I'm going to point at medical, stop over commenting. And then the finger I'm going to point back at marketing is unfortunately the thing that I know Rena has pointed out that there have been some um, polls online where medics and marketeers have been asked about the biggest problems with material uh, review, the things that medics complain about marketeers. Unfortunately, sometimes it's true. The materials that end up on the review system for the first time are of a low quality. Let me, let me row back slightly. That's, pro that's not true just of marketeers. Marketeers get the finger pointed at them most because they create the promotional material that is the highest volume of content through this. But materials that go onto the system, don't just put them on there, hoping that they're going to be approved and they are approvable. Remember, this is an approval system. You should be putting the material on for review and approval when you genuinely believe it's ready for approval. So that would be the finger I point at marketers and in fact, all content creators be willing to put your name that that material is of a high quality. Yep. Another reason for the concept review, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. yeah if you need sure. more collaboration or you're looking for some more in-depth feedback, perhaps that's the best way to go about that. When you get to the final submission, you know, to route for review and approval, we do really are looking for that high quality content. So another reason yeah. to think about the various workflows that you can set up to just benefit your whole content creation and approval process, really. And it gives accountability to both parts, mm -hmm. um, parties there, <clears throat> the concept review, because it gives accountability to medical, because me medical can say, look, we picked this up very early and we advised not to do this or to do this in a certain way. Likewise, marketing can say, we put this up for a concept review and this has not been mentioned to date. Um, and so that issue of late commenting, um, which we know is another bugbear of anyone in the review system. Those concept reviews mean that you've got accountability on both sides. 
something, if you're asking for feedback and that feedback was not given early, then it allows you at the end of the project to do a good after project review and say, well, why wasn't it picked up as early as it could so that that next project goes through a bit more, a bit more smoothly, a bit more quickly. And overall, as a brand team, you get better and quicker at getting your materials through the system um, and hopefully therefore more competitive in the marketplace or helping more patients get access to your medicine, um, yep. depending what, what the particular drivers are for you and your team. Absolutely. What a great way to end the video today, Joe. Thank you so much for coming back and digging through this data with with me. I think, again, folks find this often as like the most some of the most interesting data in the report. So I'm excited for folks to sort of hear your perspective and certainly dig into some of these best practices that we're talking about organization wide uh, that improves the efficiency and overall process. So thanks for coming back. Thanks, Annalise. And everyone, please go download the 2023 State of Promotional Review Benchmarks Report. You can download it at vidori.com slash 2023 benchmarks. And be sure to follow us on LinkedIn. We're continuing to do videos around the report, best practices, and sort of all things benchmarks. So be following us on LinkedIn to get the latest content. Thanks and have a great day. Mm -hmm.